This is a coposcope, and it's what we use for what's called colposcopy. Colposcopy is a word um, that means a microscope of the vagina or looking at the cervix with a microscope. And this is the, the little microscope that we use to look in the cervix. Colposcopies are done for abnormal pap smears. So the classes of pap smears that we tend to do colposcopies for would be an ascus with positive HPV, an LGSIL or low-grade pap smear, an HGSIL or high-grade pap smear. We also sometimes do colposcopies even if the pap smear is normal, but if somebody's having bleeding after intercourse, or if when we do the pap smear we see something that looks suspicious on the cervix itself, we want to take a closer look with the microscope. So what we do with a colposcopy is we put a speculum in, um, just like for a pap smear, and that's placed in the vagina. And then, th basically the doctor will come and look through the microscope through the speculum so that the doctor can see the cervix really close up. And this has a, a little focusing thing here. You move it back and forth. It also goes up and down and we can adjust the magnification. And so the doctor will be kind of manipulating with these things to look at the cervix. And what this does is it really magnifies the cervix to allow us to see patterns in the cervix, particular cellular patterns and also blood vessel patterns that help us to look to see if there's something abnormal. And what we usually do with a colposcopy is we'll first take a Q-tip, really a large Q-tip, and we'll um, rinse the cervix off with vinegar on the end of the Q-tip. And that allows us to see things better. The vinegar actually dehydrates the cells, and so it makes them more clear, and it makes the abnormal cells really stand out. Uh, so that's the first step. That doesn't hurt at all, really. Uh, sometimes it smells funny because you smell the vinegar, and occasionally people will have a little burning sensation from the vinegar, but most people don't feel it at all. The next step really is just looking through the microscope. And the doctor will spend some time looking at the microscope and really mapping out the cervix in his mind and seeing where the abnormalities are. If the doctor finds something that looks abnormal or even maybe a little suspicious, they may take a biopsy of the cervix. Now this is an instrument that's used to biopsy the cervix. And you can see these instruments rather long, okay, which can be intimidating for some people. But really, this is the part that actually does the work. So this is actually quite small. It's long because it's got to go all the way through the vagina, all the way over to the cervix. And so the doctor will be looking through the microscope, and it'll show up that specific area that he wants to biopsy. And looking through, he'll go down through and take the biopsy. This takes a little punch biopsy. It basically just clips a teeny bit of tissue off. And although this looks pretty intimidating, um, the truth is the amount of tissue that it removes is about the size of the head of a pin. It's a teeny amount of tissue. But that gives the pathologist an idea of what the cells are in context. So with a pap smear, the pathologist gets cells are just randomly splayed out. But this gives them cells in context of the overall matrix of the cervix, and that helps the pathologist tell us exactly what's going on. For most women, they really don't feel the biopsy. It may be a little crampy, but many times they don't feel it at all. Although the biopsy can cause some bleeding. Now, the end of the colposcopy, what's usually done is something called an ECC, or an endocervical curatage. The ECC is basically a scraping of the inside of the cervix. And the problem is the cervix is sort of donut-shaped. Uh, and you can see the outside really well, but you can't really see down in the inside too well. And so we don't know if the abnormal cells are coming from the inside part of the cervix. And so the, the ECC curette is pushed through the cervix and then scraped like this, kind of all the way around to get a little sampling of the inside of the cervix all the way around. That's taken out and put in solution. And then another instrument, this is blunt, doesn't hurt, but this helps collect the cells. That's placed through the vagina and cells are collected and that's put into the solution as well. Again, the equipment is long and curved to be able to get into the vagina back to where the cervix is. Now the ECC does cause some cramping, and so for the, the 10 or 15 seconds where the doctor's doing this, it will cramp, and that's pretty uncomfortable, but it only lasts for a few seconds and then it's over. Once that's done, then the doctor will use uh, a chemical usually called silver nitrate or something called Moncel solution on the end of a Q-tip to treat the area where the biopsies were done to stop bleeding. It's not uncommon to have some bleeding for a day or two, usually just a little bit of spotting. You may even see some dark discharge. That's the chemical coming out uh, that stopped the bleeding. But you really shouldn't leave in pain. So there's some cramping when it's done. That usually just lasts a few seconds to a minute at the most. And then by the time it's all over, you really shouldn't have any pain at all. So it's not the kind of thing you're going to need to take the whole afternoon off or anything like that. Uh, you should be fine. You'll be able to drive yourself home. It really is, is uncomfortable, 
but not a, a huge ordeal for most people. It takes a, a while for the pathology to come back, so I usually have people come back in two weeks. Um, that way we have the results back and then we can talk about what the results are. I recommend for my patients to be on pelvic rest, which means nothing in the vagina for two days, so no sex or tampons or anything else in the vagina, because that can cause more bleeding um, uh, by knocking off that chemical from the cervix, and that can cause some bleeding. So that's what a colposcopy is. Uh, you know, it can look pretty intimidating, but the truth is it's really not that much worse than a pap smear. Midtwice.com.